Many people struggle to develop strong mathematical abilities for many different reasons, and thus mathematical difficulties are best thought of as a continuum. This calculia falls on one end of that continuum and is a specific learning difficulty that affects a person's ability to understand numerical information and perform mathematical operations. Although definitions may vary, individuals with dyscalculia may have difficulty with mental maths, trouble understanding mathematical concepts, difficulty with sequencing and organising information, and challenges with time and money management. These difficulties manifest during the early school years and must persist for at least six months to be diagnosed according to the DSM-5 criteria. In addition, these learning difficulties cannot be attributed to intellectual disabilities, developmental conditions or neurological or motor impairments. While dyscalculia is often diagnosed in childhood, it can also affect adolescents and adults. The prevalence of dyscalculia has been estimated to range between 1.3% to 10% of the population. This is equivalent to roughly three children in every class of 30 children, making it a relatively common condition that can affect people of all levels of intelligence. Dyscalculia can be diagnosed through a comprehensive evaluation by a qualified professional and there are strategies and interventions that can help individuals with dyscalculia improve their mathematical skills. Dyscalculia is not a neuromyth. The exact causes of dyscalculia are not yet fully understood, but researchers believe that there may be a combination of genetic, environmental and brain-related factors. Yet there are several common misconceptions or neuromyths about dyscalculia. We are now going to describe five common myths about dyscalculia and see what's actually the case. Neuromyth 1 if a person struggles with mathematics, they have dyscalculia. This is not necessarily the case. Dyscalculia is a specific learning difficulty that affects an individual's ability to understand and perform mathematical operations. This is not the same as simply having difficulties with mathematics. A child may struggle with mathematics for a myriad of reasons, including lack of interest, poor teaching, or the curriculum being delivered too quickly for their capacity. In addition, maths anxiety can be a contributing factor to difficulties with maths, but it doesn't mean people with maths anxiety necessarily have dyscalculia. Most people with dyscalculia have specific mathematical difficulties, such as understanding how numbers relate to each other, or number sense, memorizing and retrieving numerical facts, as well as making counting errors. Neuromyth 2 Dyscalculic individuals usually only have problems with numbers and can read and write at typical levels. Individuals with dyscalculia typically experience difficulties with their working memory and visuospatial skills. As such, dyscalculia impacts all areas of the curriculum, not just mathematics. In addition, up to 20-60% to of those with dyscalculia also have other learning difficulties, such as ADHD, dyslexia and dyspraxia, with co-occurrence of maths and reading difficulties as high as 70%. It is thought that the overlap between dyscalculia and other learning difficulties is caused by shared difficulties with procedural learning, the learning and control of skills and habits. Neuromyth 3 Individuals with dyscalculia can be best helped by teaching them to remember number facts. Difficulties with number facts is only one aspect of dyscalculia. Although the actual cause of dyscalculia has not yet been established, many individuals with dyscalculia show difficulties with reasoning about quantities and with a sense of what numbers represent. As such, they may need targeted interventions and support to succeed in academic and everyday life. Additionally, accommodations such as extra time for assessments, use of a calculator or modifications to assignments can help students with dyscalculia to succeed in the maths curriculum. While there are strategies and interventions that can help individuals with dyscalculia improve their maths skills, there is no cure for dyscalculia, which is a lifelong difficulty. Neuromyth 4 it is often thought that individuals with dyscalculia are impaired across the entire maths curriculum. 
Indeed, most individuals with dyscalculia may struggle with basic arithmetic, number sense and mathematical reasoning, which can impact their ability to learn and apply maths concepts across different areas of the curriculum. Anecdotal evidence suggests that some individuals with dyscalculia can be very good at geometry and algebra, but there is scant evidence on the knowledge of geometry and algebra in individuals with dyscalculia. It is important to note that the severity and scope of dyscalculia can vary from person to person. While most people with dyscalculia struggle with many different mathematical concepts and procedures, some individuals with dyscalculia may have strengths in particular areas of maths. And with good teaching and practice, individuals with dyscalculia can make progress in maths, especially if targeted early intervention is provided. Neuromyth 5 The dyscalculic brain is wired differently, which causes problems with math, but is often associated with strengths like creativity, strategic thinking and intuitive thinking. There is currently no scientific evidence to support the claim that people with dyscalculia are more creative than those without dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is a learning difficulty that affects a person's ability to understand and work with numbers. It does not necessarily affect a person's creativity or artistic abilities. However, it is worth noting that people with dyscalculia may have developed compensatory strategies to deal with their difficulties in mathematics which could enhance their creativity in other areas. For example, they may have developed stronger verbal and visual reasoning skills, or they may have developed a more intuitive approach to problem solving. These compensatory strategies could potentially translate into enhanced creativity in certain domains. Nevertheless, it is important to recognize that dyscalculia is a real and significant learning difficulty that can have a negative impact on a person's academic and professional success. It is essential to provide appropriate support and accommodations for individuals with dyscalculia to help them overcome their challenges and reach their full potential, regardless of their creativity levels. In summary, although the exact causes of dyscalculia are not yet fully understood, dyscalculia can have a profound impact on people's lives, especially in terms of educational outcomes and financial success. Early intervention is required to help people with dyscalculia to achieve their full mathematical potential. However, neuromyths can prevent timely diagnosis, create stigma and impact on intervention practice. Thus it's important to continue our understanding of dyscalculia and reflect on any beliefs, knowledge and practices. Further research on dyscalculia, especially to how it manifests itself over time, is required. Thank you for your attention. And don't hesitate to check out more of our videos.